lot of people ask, but it's usually at a time where I can't answer it. So I'm usually doing something else. Or, but this is a perfect opportunity for you to ask any questions on these. Um, and then I will definitely go over certain things that I had planned out. Who has raised your hand? So the display stands we see nowadays, do they actually display their swords like that back in time? Or were they more just utilitarian tools that they kept near the door? Yes, this is uh, this particular stand. This is called a katanake. Or ta katanakake. Kake means uh, stand or um, rack. If you look in movies, most of the time back then, because they sat on the floor, they would have this on the floor. It wouldn't be on the wall. So in most movies, I think you've seen, there's a stand that looks like this, a kake like this. It might be two, maybe three high. But it's almost always on the floor, not on the wall, because it's hard to access it if you're over here sitting and it's over there on the wall. So it was almost always a rack behind the person or near them within reaching distance. Makes perfect sense. If you are... Uh, Certain people that, I'm going to reference sword and guns a lot because firearms are very modern and a lot of us are familiar with at least what they look like from movies. But it would be like if you wanted a firearm close to you wherever you slept, well you wouldn't leave it in the closet unless you have kids or something like that. But if you wanted it accessible, like if you were out hunting and you had a, a, something to protect you from bears, you wouldn't want the shotgun down the hill. You want the shotgun right next to your sleeping bag. Same idea. They were displayed different ways. In the older period, when you wore the armor, you would actually, you might have three of these high, or two. And how you took your swords off at night would dictate which rack they went on. So if I had the standard, let's say I had the standard three swords, okay? Uh, I had a long sword, a short sword, and a tanto. At night, when everything was calm and you were about to go to bed for the night, the tanto would come off first, and it would go uh, here. Then the wakizashi or the shoto would go next, and this one, and sometimes the sword would be on the third down. So it would look like that, instead of the opposite. Now, aesthetically to me, I don't like the look of that. I, I prefer the long sword on the top and then the short sword underneath, more like this. And I think most modern people display them like this. See how the long and shorter here? And then maybe a tanto down here. But the reason they did that is because in the morning, the first, first, first sword you put on is your tanto because it goes in the belt a certain way. It goes against your body. Then the side sword, the wakizashi, goes in the first fold of the belt. There were three folds in the belt back then, not two. We wrap twice, right? The old obi, the obi means belt. The old belt, they would wrap three times minimum to make it really strong and thick. So there'll be three layers. First layer is your tanto, second this. And then the long sword, the katana or even the tachi, would go on the outside belt on the third loop so that at no point would the swords touch together and scrape the side and make a mess. They would always have a, a belt layer between them. Uh, nowadays, because most people in the last couple hundred years wouldn't wear a tanto, they would just have two out of three swords. So for nowadays, I usually put the wakizashi against my body here, you know, against your gi, keiko gi, and the, there. And then I'll put the katana on the, on the second knot here. Can you see how that's separate? It's separate from that one. This is good for now, but they're not scraping in my belt. I feel that's very soft. You wouldn't want them scraping together. Now they also have this. This is a different type of stand called tachikake. Again, kake is stand. Who has seen those before in movies? They call this a shogun stand. And it's just another way of displaying a vertical stand. So this would be behind or next to the, the leader, the emperor. Now, I've seen these displayed so many different ways, it's going to be confusing. Rather than me telling you, this is the way it should be in this dojo, and don't you ever change it, 
that's kind of a not a very good way to, to teach. What I would rather tell you is how not to do it. And that way if you, you'll have three or four options of how to do it right. I have seen them displayed this way so that the handle is up and the blade is going that way. That's not wrong. I've seen them in museums that way. But some people would argue that you don't want the blade to ever come closer to touch the scabbard, the saya, because it will scrape through it over a long period of time. They also say that if you oil the sword, which you do, you oil it to keep it from rusting, that over, again, long periods of time, all the oil will drip down into the bottom of the scabbard and make the wood soft. And then the kasaki, which is the tip of the sword, would get blackened from the humidity and the oil pooling down here at the bottom. And everything has a purpose, doesn't it? So a lot of people say, no, you store the sword this way with the handle down that way so that it doesn't pool here with the oil. Now you could argue, well, this is better because Sean, can, if he's on the floor, it would make sense for him to have the handle very low if he's sitting in Cesar cross-legged. I've also heard people say, well, don't do it that way. You need to put it so that the blade is out. So now the blade is going this way. All the weight is here, and now the back, the mune, which is not sharp, you're never going to cut this wood because the blade is not touching here. How confusing is that? So which way is it? I can't tell you. You display it however you want in your house. That's what I would say. I tend to prefer this way. So the sword is this way, handle at the bottom. But again, I've seen it that way, that way, and the other. Some people prefer this, they think it looks better. If you're not storing it for years at a time, however you wish. And then at home, again, I would display this here on the top and a short sword underneath it. And then if I had a tanto, I would put it right underneath here on the shelf or right like that. That's how I display mine at home. I have several at home. When you're talking about how they're displayed, you talk about uh, depending on what's happening in your village, which way the handles are. Yes. Uh, some old scrolls say that when you store the sword, if you're in wartime, you want the, you want the sword to the right here. You want the handle, the suka, to the right. That way, when you get up, you can draw it very quickly if someone's coming in your castle or your house. Because everyone was right-handed, it was illegal to be left-handed, so you would never draw the sword with your left hand. I mean, there were styles that did that, to fool you, and to, you know, like secret sword schools would have left-handed techniques to, to go against the system. But in wartime, you would keep it there for easily, just uh, drawing it out. Peace time is to the left. Now, you would say in America, well, shouldn't we be displaying these all to the right? Because we are technically at war right now, are we not? Or are we not? Have we been at war with the Middle East for many years? And still are technically. Uh, but it's not in our country, so I don't agree with that. Because if America was at war and they were invading, so to speak, anyone, that's when you would turn the handles when, when it's imminent danger. You know, like, Westchester County is coming this way. Well, I might want my handle to the right just in case they attack me while I'm watching The Bachelor or something. You know what I mean? I'm joking. But you know what I mean by that. If we're at war technically with another part of the world and we're not in imminent danger, I leave them to the left because I would hope that our dojo is peaceful and no one's going to want to draw to the right. We're not threatened by our students or anything. Uh, so my opinion is I keep everything to the left unless we are in direct danger. Looking at the parts on the board, what's this called? Look at the board. This nub. It's written. Suba? Mm -hmm. Suba? Suba. Suba's Suba. the guard. What's this piece called that holds the sake in? Uh -huh. Anyone? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sake. Is that correct? Hakaki. Is my writing that poor? <laughs> Someone go up and read it and see how close you can get. What's it say? 
It's this little nub here on the side. It's the the kurigata. Kurigata. Thank you. The kurigata is this little nub on your saya, the scabbard, and this is what holds the sage or the rope in. Uh, this is the sage up here. This had a huge function, we can go over what this did. But this is held by this little nub here. You could, this is usually on the outside. So you have the katana kake here, and there's the nub right there. Again, so you could take it off the rack easily. I advise if you have children to put this on the inside, and even more, I tell you to put the suba on the inside, the guard. If the guard is on the outside, a child or a, a teenager can come along and draw that easily, cut themselves. It's no different than with the pistol, this is fake, obviously. The, it's no different than me storing the firearm on my cabinet, on my coffee table toward my children. That's so stupid. There are people that do that. So why would I leave the sword in the same manner? I would put the suba guard here so that it's not easily drawn off the, the rack. Very difficult for a child to lift that, and you know they're gonna pull on the handle. So I'd rather have them not be able to draw the sword, okay, than to be here. But again, it's your preference, it's your house, you display it however you want. Here's what not to do. Do not display the sword with the blade down. I see this all the time in people's houses, and some of you may have it right now at home, you're like, uh-oh. I see this at gun shows, and at the local mall, at those cool stores that sell swords and incense and all that that never stay in business, sadly. <laughs> they do it like this. This is how I know someone is completely ignorant. Why is this bad? Raise your hand. Those the blade. How? Well, the blade should always be on heaven so that the weight of the entire sword is not pressing down on its entirety at all. Times. Yeah, you can, you can feel the sword is touching the wood. So if I draw this out, the sharp part, which is called the ha, is all leaning on the wood, right? And over time, that's gonna cut through this and ruin it and dull your blade, just like you said. Aesthetically, to some people, that looks better. It's kind of like a smiling face, but no, it is this way. The only time it's stored down is if it's a tachi. And this isn't a tachi, but it represents one. The tachi, the older, longer swords, had certain furniture on them like this to hold them on the horse that would have to be displayed blade down. But the katana kake was, was made differently for the tachi. And the tachi was often used in this tate one, the stand-up one. Makes sense, because nothing is gonna interfere with that wood. Uh, these are good questions, so don't put it like that, please. And if you have it at home like that, please change it. Now don't go to your friend's house and yell at them because they don't know, but if they ever ask you, how do you display it? It's like this one, it's this way. Now, when you're holding the sword and you're in Seiza, this is what you can grab your own if you have one now, if everyone has one. Let's put it in our belt. So, uh, if you have a sageo here, if you hold it this way, and my left thumb goes to my obi, or even if I'm holding it looped, this is another way of holding it, it's here, and I put the sword in my belt on the left hip. Everyone do that if you haven't yet. Sageo here, you don't want it to be in front, it's in the way, so I droop it over the saya in the back. That's usually enough. Some people droop it and then they tie it way over here. It's fine, you can do that as well. It doesn't matter for tonight. You can put it right against your body under both or the first. Anything that'll hold it. Yeah, good question. But this is just get this out of the way. Do we like, do we like a smiling face or not? Good question. If your blade is up, you are now Johnny Depp and a pirate. <laughs> you can be him. But if you want to be a samurai and a ninja, the blade is up toward heaven. Blade down your pirate. Unless, what? Unless it's Itachi. If you're on a horse, they wore the blade down because they had to draw it without killing the horse and stuff. 
very different way of drawing these long swords. The blade was down. This is old times, but the Edo period, which is um, you had the Sengoku Jidai, which is the warring states of Japan, hundreds of years long. It ended in 1603, somewhere around there. Then, after Japan got tired of fighting with itself so much, they had the peacetime called the Tokugawa era or the Edo period, same, same meaning. Tokugawa Ieyasu was a leader of Japan who brought everyone together, so to speak. He brought all the shogun together. Shogun is the military leader, uh, but he brought the daimyo together. The daimyo are like the, the lords of Japan, the feudal lords. Dai means big and Mio means uh, private land. So a daimyo was just like a really wealthy, powerful individual that owned a ton of land, a ton of rice, a lot of fight, a lot of taxes. And he would own certain samurai. They had like armies. But they fought each other for hundreds of years. There's many movies about that. Then when Tokugawa came into power, he brought everybody together. And they kind of just stopped fighting. And there were 300 or more um, daimyo at one time, 300 leaders in the country that would have sections, you know, it's like a leader of Cincinnati, we'd have a, a daimyo. And then the shogun was the military leader who was head of everybody later on. But in the peace times, 1603 to 1880-something, uh, they stopped wearing armor, they didn't need that anymore, so the yodori was gone, and they changed the length of the sword and everything. They didn't have tachi, they changed it to the katana, much shorter, could be used one or two hands. I don't know where I was going with that, but I, cause I can, I can literally go on for an hour like this, but I wanna get back on topic. Um, my right, th always put your thumb on the suba. Again, this is like having a uh, safety on your gun. Safety on the gun is here, in this case. I want, my thumb is my safety. By putting my thumb there, it visually shows you all I'm not going to draw it. If it's here, it looks a little suspicious, so here's good. When you take this out, it's always a good idea to have the blade toward you, toward me, the owner of the sword. It's considered insulting to turn the blade toward you. It's just threatening. Again, it's like the barrel of a gun. You would, you would never point the barrel towards something you're not willing to kill or destroy. So why would I ever put the gun toward my friend, ever? If anything, the barrel will go behind us or in a sheath or something safe from any, any danger. So this is good. Now, every school I've studied, Asian Ryu, uh, it doesn't matter, Katori Shinto, they all have a different method of putting the sword on the ground. I think it's okay if you just have the katana, if it's on your left side here, with the blade toward your leg. And the sagio is behind it. This again is non-threatening. Even though you would draw it from the left, the blade is toward my leg. So if I draw this out, it's really awkward. The blade is toward me. I have to kind of do this and turn it. Oh, it's too slow. If I have the blade out toward Mr. Curtin here, that looks threatening. But I would hold it like this if I didn't trust you, because I can draw it very quickly from here. Okay, so uh, if you feel threatened, keep the sword right at bay here. If you're with a friend, put it this way. Other people say, no, it should be way over on your right with the blade toward your right leg. This is even more safe and more awkward to draw. Other schools will argue. So stupid how they argue. No, blade should be out like that. <laughs> who cares? It's such minutia. But it's no different than anyone who goes to a firearms forum. People argue over the fishing forum. People will argue over anything. They just love to be keyboard warriors. Some even say, no, you put it behind you. That's really safe. Now, R-E-I means uh, respect, etiquette. Before you train with the sword, it's a good idea to salute the sword. 
It's not a religious thing, but you're showing respect, just like you would do a firearm or any other weapon. So if I am going to salute my own sword, uh, I'm holding it with my left hand here. Again, the thumb is on the guard. Often this is looped in your, your finger here and held, so this is off the ground. You take your right hand here, you put it near the bottom, and you turn it this way. It, it just looks better than, so from here, you grab the bottom and you lift it. If I put it on the ground, here in front of me, I want the suba guard near my left knee. Again, people argue. Some say blade is toward the opponent. Some will say, no, the blade should be toward you. I don't think it makes much of a difference because it's safe in the sire. Uh, I tend, if I'm by myself, to put the blade out. And then go ahead and do that if you haven't. And then to salute the sword, it's very simple, left and right. Bow respectfully, bending at the lower back, low before you start. Again, this is showing focus. It's showing awareness to what I'm up about to do. I can't be thinking about later tonight or yesterday. This is in the moment. Often the sagio is around the scabbard like this, traces it here. Now, if I'm gonna put this back in my belt, again, I lift it. I can put it this way in front of me. That's okay to do. Make sure the sagio is off the ground. Now I can put it in my belt however I need to, and we're ready to go. In the dojo, if you're going to hand your katana to someone, it's the same idea. It's in your left hand. You would loop this, and you would hold it up. Always have the blade toward you, the owner. Do not put the blade toward the person you're giving it to. It's insulting. So here. At this point, I raise it up to head level, and I would salute the sword as I hand it to you. And the person on the other side would probably reach with their right hand, grab and grab and take it from you. So this is a very polite way of giving someone a sword, especially as a gift. You're going to give someone a sword as a gift. Here, you've seen this in movies all the time. Any questions so far on any of that? Yes. Would they take it from the middle or from the end? If I was receiving, go ahead and hold that like you are. Uh, I've often seen it done with the dominant hand, but I would probably take it from you exactly how you're giving it to me, almost in a prayer form. I would probably take it like this, because this shows like I'm not going to draw, correct? So again, this might look like, go ahead, I'm not going to do this, right? Draw it. This is even kind of threatening. I would probably be here and I would bow and take it. Very hyper respectful, okay? Now, we're going to take a five minute break because I have to talk to Mr. Crum over there. It's very important. So I'm going to have Mr. Danes do a simple sword drawing drill with you guys to practice and get some physical movement. We will adjourn here in five or ten minutes and continue this because I have much more.